Etan Thomas played nine years in the National Basketball Association, but is more known today for his writing and activism. His latest book is We Matter, Athletes and Activism. In it, Thomas interviews athletes about the new wave of athletic activism that is coming to the forefront. And, um, you know, a lot of it revolves around police brutality and everything that's been going on and the, the unarmed killings of black and brown men and women uh, by the police and then no accountability for it. Um, so that's when everybody's passions and I wanted to delve deeper into, you know, why it personally affected them so much. So, you know, Dwayne Way is talking about how after Trayvon Martin was killed, I mean, he thought about his sons, you know. And I mean, because so, sometimes you, you, you see, okay, this person took a knee, this person, you know, said a statement, but then that's kind of it. But I wanted to go, go a little deeper. And, you know, Anquan Bolden telling me about how his cousin um, was killed by the police, and that kind of pushed him into activism. And, um, you know, everybody has a story, so I just wanted to capture all of it. We Matter also features stories from non-famous people who have lost relatives to violence. During Kaepernick taking a knee, and I talked to Eric Reed about this, who was, you know, taking a knee with Kaepernick the entire time, um, you know, it's like the message was being lost into why exactly Kaepernick was taking a knee. It started being transformed into something else, like something against the military or something against the veterans or the flag. And I was like, well, no, this is what it's about. So, you know, I talked to Trayvon Martin's brother, Javaris, and um, Terrence Crutcher's sister, uh, Tiffany, and, um, you know, Eliza Castile and Valerie Castile, who's Philando Castile's uh, sister and, and mother. And, you know, I wanted to talk to them about, you know, specifically, you know, how they felt when they saw athletes speaking up on their behalf. And then also, you know, what they're doing now. So, you know, with Emerald, um, who's Eric Garner's daughter, I interviewed her and, you know, at that point, she hadn't really spoken too much, you know. Um, everything it was kind of fresh and new and just kind of really happened. And she talked about feeling an overwhelming appreciation when she saw all of the NBA players wearing the I Can't Breathe shirts because, you know, it felt like somebody was speaking on her father's behalf. And now to see them, you know, all speaking in different places and pushing for laws to be changed and trying to make a difference. Thomas also spoke to athletes who played years ago who helped set the stage for today's activist athletes. When I talked to, like, like talking to Bill Russell and him telling me the, the way that, you know, he's winning championships in Boston, and, you know, then he started talking about segregation, and, you know, I think they went to the game in Kentucky, and they, they said they weren't going to play because they couldn't eat at the restaurant. They told him, like, to get their food from the back. And he was like, what? You know, and Bill Russell was like, no, if we can't eat here, we, you're not going to embrace us today, we're not going to play. And he talked about the level of how everybody turned on him and they talked about him ransacking his house and just not stealing anything, just breaking everything. And, you know, the level of hatred. Now, he's in there winning multiple championships in Boston, you know, but he's still, you know, in that, in that area that you have to stay in this lane. So, you know, and, and it's important for young people to realize how things have changed where you don't have that level of backlash. You might have people on Twitter that might be upset with you, you know what I mean? But, that, but that's a totally different level than what Bill Russell and John Carlos and those guys had to deal with, you know, in the 50s and the 60s. One of the strongest reasons why athletes getting involved is so powerful is because of their reach into mainstream America, according to Thomas. There's so many different ways that you can impact, but you have to get everybody's attention. And he praised Colin Kaepernick so much for, you know, for getting everybody's attention and invading their space, their safe space, the place where they didn't want to see that or talk about that or they just wanted to enjoy their football. But again, that's a, the privilege that, you know, that, that a lot of mainstream America has and they have to understand how after a lot of black NFL players leave the game, you know, they're still black. <laughs> so they're leaving the game and they're pulled over by a policeman and there are certain rules that they have to follow in order to de-escalate a situation that they didn't escalate in the first place. Now, they could have just scored a game-winning touchdown, you know what I mean? But, but, but when they're coming home and, you know, then, and the police is pulled over, they're looked at as a threat. And it's that reality that, that kind of woke up mainstream America. Now, of course, you're going to have some people that didn't want to hear anything about it and stuff like that. But others, they're like, huh, you know, we, we didn't really recognize. And they hear it differently when an athlete says it. 
You know, of course, it shouldn't be that way, but that's just the way that it is. In addition to writing We Matter, Thomas travels the country to help create dialogue and positive change. You know, a lot of, a lot of times we're speaking, you know, we, we spoke at UPenn and, you know, it was a mostly white audience. And they said, honestly, you know, we don't know this world. Like, this is a whole new world for us. We hear everybody talking about it, but it's not our reality, so we don't know. And I was like, yeah, that, but you have to understand the privilege to not have to know is different. Like, you could choose to know, could choose to, like, research it, choose to, but, you know, it's every day for us. And, you know, a lot of times people think that athletes are in this protective bubble and, you know, that they're not like regular black people, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like different. But, um, you know, I want to interview Tabo Cephalosha for the book and James Blake. You know, Tabo Cephalosha, of course, had his um, leg broken by the NYPD. And James Blake, you know, also again by the NYPD, they tackled him in broad daylight, you know, thought that he, and he's going to the U.S. Open. But now they're also using their platform, you know, to speak out and say, you know, this isn't okay. And we're going to try to do something to change it. So we're going to do something on one hand to talk to young people about engaging with the police and how to get home safely. You know, even if you've done nothing wrong, even if you're not the one at fault, how you could get home safely. And then on the other hand, you know, we're trying to push for laws to be changed so that what has been happening doesn't continue to happen. So I've connected with a lot of different, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of new victims now and the family of new victims, you know, of police brutality. And, you know, it's going to continue using the book as a backdrop, but just really, you know, spreading the word, speaking in different places, pushing for laws to be changed. You know, there's so many different layers, but I want to continue to encourage athletes to be able to use their voices and not be afraid to stand out and, and stand up for what they believe in and take a stand because their voices have so much power. Thomas was the recipient of the 2010 National Basketball Players Association Community Contribution Award, as well as the 2009 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation Legacy Award. He continues to write, speak out, and encourage others to work together for success. Well, so there's, there's so many messages that, that, are, that are, you know, throughout the book, and that's why I like putting in so many different voices um, because messages are different and people have different, you know, reasons and different thoughts, but it's surrounding a, a common issue and a common problem that's identified. And, um, you know, everybody can be a part of it. And that's one of the things that Kareem always says. He's like, no, no, not just athletes. He said he wants everybody to use their voice, you know, everybody to use their platform, whatever that platform is.